Good morning and welcome to Sunday, March the 29th, 2020. This is Sister Linda Kirkland coming to you on the behalf of the Greater Beulah Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Anthony L. Willis Sr. is our pastor. If today is your first day joining us, we are doing our Sunday school just a tad bit different. We will be having our Sunday school online for the next couple of weeks. Amen. So we wanted to make sure that our members would not miss out on our Sunday school because here at Beulah, we do believe that we get our strength in the word of God. Amen. So go with me, grab your Bibles, or if you have your Sunday school books, we will be studying from Malachi, the second chapter, one through nine, and Malachi three, the third chapter, five through six. So let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, just to say thank you. Lord, we come giving you the highest praise, Lord God, and we just want to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for keeping us safe, even in the midst of what's going on with the coronavirus, Lord God. We say thank you for blessing correct and keeping our family lord we just want to ask your mercy and your grace and your protection to continue to be with us in the name of jesus lord i just ask that you'll continue to watch over us protect us our entire church our families in the name of jesus a special prayer that goes out to our pastor because i know that his prayer is for his congregation lord so we ask for the strength in him in the name of jesus lord we pray right now hallelujah lord god that you will continue to be even in the midst of our presence right now. Bless him right now. Help him to God to make the right decisions, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We need you right now. Hallelujah. So we just pray that you would continue to be with us. Lord, and then, Lord, I ask that you would be with me as we come to study your words this morning. We move old Linda out the way and bring your Holy Spirit. Anoint your spirit upon me so that my words will be your words and that someone would be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I'd like to say welcome again. This is Sister Linda Kirkland coming from the Greater Beulah Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Anthony L. Willis Sr. is our pastor. And our Sunday School lesson this morning is entitled Justice for All. And it's coming from Malachi, the second, the Malachi, the second chapter, one through nine, and then Malachi, the third chapter, five through six. And when I first heard the read over the title, it says Justice for All, I immediately thought about our United States Pledges Allegiance because the last sentence says Justice for All. And when I thought about that, I said, what does Justice for All mean? And for me, I think about justice, the right thing to do. So everyone would be blessed, everyone with Justice for All. So there would be right things for everybody. Everybody would be treated fairly. Everyone would be treated the same. So when you say justice for all, and I wanted to see how the person that did the Sunday school books, how they would bring this into Malachi, which is Malachi was a messenger of God. And so this lesson is so exciting to me, and I think that you're going to love it. So let's jump right in. Hopefully you have your Bibles by now, so you have already turned to Malachi. Malachi, the second chapter, 1 through 9, and then Malachi, the third chapter, 5 through 6. So let's begin by reading our scripture because it's so important um, today that you get this because you really need to pay attention to this lesson today or you really could get thrown off a little bit. So let's read from, um, I'm reading for the New Revision Standard, New Revised Standard Version. And Malachi, the second chapter, first through fifth, and it says, And now, O priest, this command is for you. If you would not listen, if you would not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord host, then I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed them because you do not lay it to heart. I will rebuke your offspring and and spread dung on your faces, the dung of your offering, and I will put you out of my presence. Fourth verse, know then that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may hold, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant with him was a covenant of life and well-being, which I gave him. This called for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction. This is verse six. 
was in his mouth and no wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in integrity and uprighteousness and he turned many for iniquity. For the lips of a priest should God knowledge and people should seek instruction from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But you have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by your instructions. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. And so I make you despised and abased before all the people. And as much as you have not kept my ways, but you have showed partiality in your instruction. Wow, that was Malachi's second one through nine. Amen. So let's, let me give you a little background scripture. So, you know, a little background about what was happening up to this point. So, um, there was so much going on. The leaders back in that time, um, they were not doing what the Lord had called them to do. And what we had to remember back then, the priests, they were really like the leaders and, um, Malachi, Malachi was a messenger and God did not like what was going on. So he chose Malachi to go to be the messenger to the priests. And some of the things that was going on back then was the people was being corrupt. Um, there was corrupt leaders. There was divorces going on. There was infidelity going on. There was, um, People wasn't tithing the way that they should. There was improper worship going on. And most importantly, they was dishonoring God. Wow. And when I read all this, I said, now, how is that going to bring the last lesson into today? But to ask a question. So the question to you is, do you think that we have any corrupt leaders in our world today? Do you think that there's a high volume of divorces going on today? Do you think that there's some infidelity going on today? Do you think that there are some people that's not paying their tithes the way that they should? Do you think that people are not worshiping God the way that they should? And most importantly, again, do you think that there are people that's dishonoring God? Is that amazing or what? So some of the same thing that was going on during that time, do you think that it's going on and today is 2020? Yeah, I would have to say yes. And that's just Linda now. I would have to say yes. So they, all of that was going on. So again, God was just so, so, just so extraordinary and so unpleased with what they were doing. So he called Malachi to go and to tell the priest what they were doing that he was very unpre unpleased with it. So Malachi, he was sent to to, J to Jadir to go and tell the people, I mean to tell the priests that how they was dishonoring God and not using God's name in vain correctly. So Malachi, he went and did just as the Lord has told him and he went to the priest. Now, I do want to remind you that back then the priest was responsible for the spiritual leadership of God's people. And the priest was also um, responsible for making sure that the, they had a good leadership role and that they were treating the people fairly and that they were um, doing the will of what God, that they know that God called them to do. And so back then when God saw what was happening and wanted to send Malachi, he actually sent them, sent him so that the priest could recognize what they were doing, that it was not done the way that God wanted them to do this. And so, um, what I wanted to do is just to remind us of, when you're a leader in the things that God has told us to do, even as Christians, let's let's just put it this way, even as Christians, and thank you, Lord, this is a good way to put it. So even as Christians, um, God has entrusted us as Christians to carry out his will. And that means spreading the love of God and spreading just the good news of Christ. And the good news of Christ is just sharing with someone what God has done for you. And what God has done for you may be different what God has done for me. So we all as Christians, we have a role that we should play. 
as a Christian. And so Christians, we are responsible for sharing the good gospel of Jesus Christ, right? So although we know that some of us, we don't do what the Lord has called us out to do, and that is sharing the good news of Christ. And we have heard so many times that the Bible says that faith without works is dead. So when we claim that we know Jesus, that means that you confess that you know Christ. That means that you are a Christian, but then you don't share the good news to others. That means that you're dead in your salvation, right? So in the same way, the priests back then, they were not doing what God told them to do. God told them to, to lead the people and they wasn't leading the people. God told them to share his good news and they wasn't sharing the good news. So are we doing what God told us to do, sharing the good news of Christ? So I love to just bring the lesson to today so that we can understand that even today, some of the things that was going on back then, it's the same thing just repeated over and over again. So as Christians, I just want you to remember that we do have an obligation to tell others about the good news of Christ. And for myself, I always felt like being a Christian that we we have a great responsibility um, to lead others to Christ and to let others know about Christ. And in order to do that, we really need to stay, really have a strong relationship in Christ. And we, we really have that strong relationship in Christ by just staying connected, by, by praying and talking to God and, and studying the word and fasting. Those are the things that keep your relationship growing in Christ. And as long as your relationship in Christ grows, then you know that you're growing spiritually. Amen? Amen. So, just spending time with God on a daily basis, that's one of the things that we need to do as Christians so that we can continue our roles as Christ and that we can make sure that we're doing what God has called us to do and that we will not be like some of the priests was back then, not following the law that God has asked them to do. So, um, don't want to take up too much time, but I just want to remind you that as Christians, we need to keep our faith right now. We need to stay strong in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And don't forget now, we will meet here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. At 9 a.m., I mean. And you are welcome to invite someone else or send the link to someone else. Now, next Sunday will be the first Sunday in April. And I want to remind everyone, if you have not picked up your Sunday school book, the church will be open on Wednesday from 5.30 to 6.30. Please stop by to get your Sunday school book. And also, let's stop by to send up a thank you to the Lord for what he has done. May God bless you and may his spirit shine upon you. Be blessed and see you next week.